All right, everybody, I'm very happy to introduce to you another very, very special guest that we have on here. He is famous for being the most over-ref in the business today. He is none other than Jason the Stash Olsen. Jason, welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. I'm very happy that y'all invited me on. Well, I'm happy that you are on, so... (laughs) We're happy all around. We're getting the big stars down, man. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not every day you can say the most over so and so is on your show. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I would say the most over indie referee in the business, maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll, we'll, this guy being modest over here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll roll with that, I suppose, right. yeah, for, for now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just get on into it here, man. I want to talk a little bit about you. And how you started out and, you know, getting into the business or whatever. So, uh, let's kind of start where it started with all of us. Uh, when you were a kid, what were you, uh, like a fan of? Um, were you a fan of wrestling? What promotions? What wrestlers? Oh, absolutely. I was a huge, huge, huge mark whenever I was a kid. My stepfather, probably whenever I was 12 or 13, got me into WCW. We watched Thunder. We watched Nitro. Uh, we watched Saturday morning wrestling. I mean, it was just all the time. Ted Turner's WCW was always on. My uh, dad was a real big fan of Sting, which mm. really made me a big Sting mark. You know, I, I really loved DDP. I loved Dean Malenko. I wasn't really too big of a fan of Hulk Hogan coming over to WCW. <laughs> but <clears throat> other than that, you know, I was a WCW mark. You know, Harlem Heat. Booker T was like... Oh my God, I, I loved Booker T as a kid. And it's just ironic that I work with him now. <laughs> that's not revisionist, revisionist history there, is it? Right? No, that's an employee trying to make it good with his boss. That's what that is, ladies and gentlemen. Bravo, sir. I love you, Book. <laughs> All right. Uh, you were basically a fan of WCW. Which is interesting because you know I I kind of knew WCW was there and I watched a little bit of it. I was more of a I was more of a WWE guy. And Charles, I think you kind of you did both, didn't you? <laughs> I went both ways. No, <laughs> <laughs> no uh, yeah, w, yeah, WWF was my uh, right. cup of tea. You know, we uh, you know when we had all the friends over, I had some friends over in the, the old uh, you know WCW. Uh, that was back in. The old Sting, Vader, Mankind, or not, uh, Cactus Jack days, you know, Jack, so, yeah. so yeah, that was, um, yeah, <laughs> they, can't, they can't see that. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> I just didn't want to break in on you, you know. That's just did the, the bang bang. <laughs> I, yeah. I can't help it, I do it every time, every match. It's, every time you say the words Cactus Jack, it's obligatory. You yes, you, yeah, have, you to. have to. Yeah. Do yeah. It's by instinct, you know, so I'm like fighting not to do it myself. Okay, so yeah, I was, you know, more WWF. Yeah, we, we we knew about WCW. We watched it every once in a while, but the main thing was, you know, WWF. But yeah, right. so I, I think it's a uh, rather commendable that we have a WCW mark here. He's like, oh, wow. Yeah, the other side of the you, spectrum. You act like, it's a, kids, you know? exactly like it's a rarity. Well, it's, right? not, it's not a rarity, but it's like, oh, yeah, let's bounce it out. I forgot, you know, that was there. All right. So you decided that you wanted to get into the wrestling career, man, and how that come about, man? What, what happened? You know, it's it's kind of an interesting story. Um, whenever I was growing up, my dad you always used to hang out with me. He'd be like, hey, you know, you really need to work out. You could be that one day because my grandfather on his side actually worked out with Ric Flair in Florida. Really? really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, like way back in the day, worked out with Ric Flair. So... My family has been in wrestling for a long time. I just, it, I really wasn't blood relative of them, but, right. you know, whatever. And uh, he said, hey, you really need to work out. If you get big, you know, we'll get into the business. You can be a wrestler. I'll be your manager. It'll be great. And, you know, as I got older, I started realizing that, you know, I'm really not going to be a big, huge guy. Hmm. So I probably... That sounds familiar. I'm probably <laughs> not going to go down that avenue. I graduated high school. I went off into the army. I came home. Whenever I came home, my dad, my dad got sick Mm. and, uh, he got lymphoma and he was hospitalized. And a couple days before he died, he brought up wrestling again. Mm. And, uh, he kind of said, Hey, you know, I still think you can do this. Mm. Don't give up on that. I'll be watching and I was like, ah, oh, stop talking that way. And two days later, he died. And 
that kind of started me down the path of wanting to get into the wrestling business. I mean, that really lit a fire under me. And by that time, WCW was no more. It was all WWE. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, and here I am looking through the phone book, trying to find a place to work, trying to find a place to get trained. And I ended up going to get trained by a guy. Probably wasn't the safest idea in the world. Because uh, one of the guys I know now, I, I work with him. One of my first days of training, I ended up hurting myself. I tore my rotator cuff in my right shoulder. Oh, on, really? On the first yeah. day, huh? Uh, well, not on the first day. Yeah. It was it was within the first week. I mm. mean, I yeah. mean, I was just learning how to bump and learning how to take a front roll, and and we were doing arm drags and hip tosses and you know hammer locks. And this guy put a hammer lock on me and didn't stop. He just kept going and then threw my shoulder into the corner mm. and I heard it pop and it popped back in and I continued on with what I was doing and well let's just say doctor said don't do that you can't be a worker so that really depressed me um, I kind of went into a dark place and it took about six months for my arm to heal up to where I was you know able to move it again rehab it and uh same guy called me up and introduced me to Booker. So that's kind of how I got into it. I went down, talked to Book, mm -hmm. and I said, hey, man, I really love the business. I really want to be a part of it. Man, I'm such a big fan. And Book sat there and he listened to all of it. And uh he said, well, I don't think I have anything for you as a wrestler, but I need a referee. <laughs> Referee, God, I don't want to be the ref. You know? <laughs> Jeez, you know, I mean, it, the guy that's never seen. I mean, come on, I don't want to be that. And then I, you know, I took it took me a, probably about ten minutes to decide. To say, <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I'm not going to pass this up. Sure, I want to be a ref. And yeah. uh, you know, the next day, here I am working in a ring with Charlie Haas. And Shelton Benjamin and Booker T, all in the same ring. These are guys that I was watching right, yeah. when I was younger, and now all of a sudden I'm interacting with them. I thought I was, I thought I died. I thought I was dreaming. I was pinching myself. Died and gone to Mark Heaven. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. I don't think there's a worker out there that isn't a Mark. Oh yeah. A lot of a lot of guys don't want to act like it, <laughs> and you don't want to act like it backstage. But we all got into this business because we loved it. We grew up watching it. It's not because of the money, especially at the independent level. Hmm. It's because you really want to be a part of something. You want to help people put aside the bad day, you know, and forget about things for a moment and concentrate on what's going on in the ring. That's what I do it for. Well, that's, uh, I mean, wow. That's some really heavy stuff. That's a really touching story there. I mean, you went through all this tra tragedy, went through all these things, and you still pursued it. You still were tenacious enough to want to get into the business and it may not be you know what you thought you were going to do right but you're a ref now and not only are you a ref you're like just <laughs> I, I mean i hate to say it again you're one of the most over refs out there but i mean that's what you are we cheer for you a lot at uh at row uh, you chant, all those. yeah you got your own custom chant that we do for this guy <laughs> and um i just think that it's you know awesome that even through all this, your perseverance and your tenacity is, you know, paid off and you still are doing, you know, that that you wanted to do and that, you know, you had talked about with your dad and stuff. I, I think that's that's really moving. Thank you. I, I mean, I'm telling you, whenever I'm in the ring and I hear my chant, it's like, I whenever I come through the curtain, let's put it this way, whenever I come through the curtain, I, I'm every time I'm blown away. I am so humbled by the fact <laughs> that. I, people are chanting, and I never, ever, ever thought this would ever happen. And to be honest with you, I don't need it. Thank you so much for doing <laughs> it, but I don't need it. I, I would much rather y'all chant for the wrestlers that, that are coming out instead of me, because that's who I'm out there to help. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm out there to try to put the workers over. Yeah. Well... That'll kind of transition me into something that I wanted to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. Because being a ref, yes, you're still in the wrestling business, but there's some things that are going to be, you know, a little bit different. You're talking about us wanting to get the, the wrestlers over. And the wrestlers are the ones that always have, you know, the dream of making it. And whenever you listen to, you know, any documentary DVD, 
you'll hear, you know, the wrestlers that made it big talk about, oh, on the independent scene, you know, there was one night I had to drive from Philadelphia to New York to, you know, make a show, you know, back to back and Mm -hmm. all these stories about how they had to work their way up in the business. And I mean, I had to plead ignorance on this. What is it like with refs? Is it the same way? Do you guys just go by a different set of rules? How do you make it up higher in the wrestling business as a referee? Well, referees, um, especially on the independent circuit, most promotions have one or two refs that they use all the time, and it's usually a, a, a green rookie at their wrestling school that's working as the referee. You know, a lot of times the refs don't travel too much. I've heard of and worked with some referees that travel. I personally don't. I stay pretty much in Texas. I've been to Austin a couple times. I think I've worked Texas City once. Whenever I went to work for Book, I told Book I was going to help him make his promotion a success. Whatever I had to do, I was going to do it. Mm. And I've, I've been pretty much Book's guy, you know. I mean, I've been on loan a couple times, but <laughs> you know, I'm pretty much Book's ref. But as far as making it further in the business, I mean, in my opinion... In order to make it as a ref, in order to make it to that next level, you have to do the right thing for your workers. You have to constantly, day in, day out, every show, show up and make the guys in the ring look good. If you can do that and you stay out of their way and you can listen to an earpiece (laughs) and listen to the guys at the same time, then you can go far. But if you let the fame get to you or you let... (laughs) You know, you let your ego or your pride get in the way, and you want to be Mr. Big Shot, then you may or may not make it to that next step. I mean, that's that's just how it is. And a lot of it is being in the right place at the right time. I mean, you have to make your opportunities. Any guys that are out there that are listening to this that are refs and they're just now getting started, all I can tell you is always have your gear with you, <laughs> no matter where you are, and... Be ready at a moment's notice and just be ready to work and do your best every time. And may I add, have a fantastic mustache. <laughs> we got to talk about this, man. Your name is Stash. And Not I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking right now. That, is, that thing is fantastic. Well, thank you. Do, I appreciate it. Is, it. is it special grooming or anything that you do with that thing? Or well, what's, what's going know, on with this thing? Actually, the, whenever I work shows, I have a waterproof gel that I use. It's called Spike It. And, uh, uh, you know, it, with all the sweating and everything, my stash stays up. So, that, priorities. Priorities. You've got to make sure the stash is, you know, there. But Spike it. Even with all the sweat, your stash will stay up. Yes. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You could do commercials for that stuff. I really could. I need to... We need to get an endorsement going. <laughs> and that is a professionally groomed looking stash. Here. Well, yes. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's. It, I, I usually put it up probably three or four days out of the week. I've got it up, and I just use regular, you know, mustache wax during that. But <laughs> wait, <laughs> <laughs> hold up, <laughs> mustache wax? Yes, yes, yes. There is such thing as mustache wax. Yeah, and whenever I <laughs> whenever I tell you the name of the company that I get it from, you'll just. I know you'll die laughing. No, no, we gotta know. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't hold back now. Oh, uh, it's 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 Gravy J's mustache. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gravy J's yeah. mustache wax. Yeah, that sounds like another endorsement right there. <laughs> this, yeah, this interview is brought to you by Gravy J's mustache wax <laughs> for That's all awesome. your for all your mustache wax needs. There you go. There you go. But. <laughs> Here's where the, st- the stash came from, okay? Okay, all right. Now... The origin of the stash? <laughs> the or- we're going to get the origin? Oh, this is, this, this is, is the origin of the this stash. Is exclusive. <laughs> this exclusive. This isn't exclusive, <laughs> because cause my wife's going to kill me. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. Now, I, I decided I wanted to have a mustache, but she hated it. She couldn't stand it, because her dad <laughs> had a mustache. And I said, well, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to grow it out anyway. <laughs> and so I did. And... I remember before one of the shows, because I was clean shaven up until like 2007, middle part of 2007. I remember I was sitting backstage and Book walks up and he goes, what the heck is that on your face? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Book, it's a mustache, you know? Come on, I think it'll get over. And he was like, 
Well, whatever. All right. <laughs> you know, it, it was on it was on the razor's edge at that moment. No pun intended. <laughs> or but, was it? Or was it? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he let me keep it, and so I just kept letting it grow. And uh, to be honest with you, it got long because I got lazy. I was, I was like, I was like, okay, well, you know. I'm I'm not going to worry about trimming it. And then uh, one of the fans actually said something to me at Pasadena. They're like, oh, you look like Raleigh Fingers. And I went, <laughs> what? And then I went, wait a minute. I could do a handlebar mustache. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I got it, you know. Now we're cooking. Right? Now we're cooking with gas. So, uh, yeah, I just let it grow. And, and I've had it ever since. I think 2008 was the first year that I got the stash appreciation night at uh, Christmas Chaos. I, I literally I almost forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally I still have the belt that I got <laughs> that night. I, I literally have it up on my wall. It's it's painted black and white referee stripes. It's awesome. I, I mean that I still have the signs that said you know stash stash stash. I yeah. the first signs. They were left there. Mm. I picked them up while we were cleaning up the arena. And I was like, I'm taking these home with me. <laughs> you know? This was my first night I got over. And I remember I was so scared. I was scared to death. I was like, book, I, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I promise I didn't do this. He's like, whatever. Go ahead. Just go have fun. Mm. You know, do it. And I was like, really? I'm not in trouble? He goes, no, go ahead. Okay. I'm out there, you know? <laughs> yeah. So... I still think about that to this day. Before every show, I look at that belt. And I'm like, I got to be the stash I was then. <laughs> tonight. So, thank you. <laughs> thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you bring that up. And, and you said that, you know, you thought maybe you were going to be in trouble. And you mentioned a little while ago about, you know, your job is to get, you know, the, the wrestlers over. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I just... I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about it and something I'd like to call ref theory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it seems as though that there hasn't been really a whole lot of referees in, in all of wrestling that have ever had gimmicks or angles or any storyline or anything like that. Uh, I mean, we did kind of with Hebner, but with Hebner it was like kind of by accident because after the Montreal screw job, he got all this heat and then they ran with it. And we just saw at the pay-per-view at lockdown, with uh, something happened there with Taryn Terrell where she actually got involved in the match with Gail Kim and you know she actually hit one of the competitors, didn't do the count and did the count for, you know, the other the face, the other person. What what how do you feel about that and how do you feel about referees maybe taking on their own storylines, their their own, you know, gimmicks and angles and whatnot? Well, you know, in in my opinion, I think things like that. I mean, not in, not in the Earl Hebner case because <laughs> that's a special case. Yeah, he's 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 never going to work as a worker, you right? Know? And if he does, it's going to be probably on the level of like May Young or something along those lines. <laughs> not saying that he can't move; he can go. He's, yeah. he's man. He's an awesome awesome ref, but I really don't see him going out and working a match as a as a worker, right? <clears throat> but you know, these, these newer angles, in my opinion, what it is, is the company is setting this person up as a referee, but they're really wrestlers. They're mm -hmm. just playing the part of a referee for a time mm -hmm. to set up for the angle. Like with Brad Maddox. Like with Maddox. Brad Maddox, you know. And Mad Ox, whatever. <laughs> Mad Ox, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I really don't think, from my perspective, I'm not a real big fan of the referee angle. I mean, I, I see where it... I see where its entertainment value is, mm -hmm. but for me personally, I don't want to do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do that now. Would I not jump at the chance to work a work a show as a wrestler just once? Absolutely, I'd love to do it, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have anything to do with my gimmick. Right. I'd probably work in a mask, and you know, I, I wouldn't want anything to be tied to me as a referee. Okay. Uh, you know that that's just me. What now? What if it wasn't like a thing where it was like with Brad Maddox, Brad Maddox or Taryn Terrell or anything like that, where it's like, let's say you get signed to you know a, a major company or whatever, and they say, "Hey, 
we're going to have you as a ref. You're always going to be a ref. You're, you're not, a, you know, going to be a wrestler. But we're going to give you like um, these these storylines. Like you'll be the senior referee, and you're just so good at being a referee, you can uh, turn around and know when the heel's about to cheat. You know, mm-hmm. you you can be like that one ref that's like really good and have their own thing. Like, what what would you think about something like that? Now, that I think has some entertainment value. Mm-hmm. I mean, I whenever you talk about things like that, I I, I think about the old little Nate with yeah. Ric Flair. Yeah, that's what I think of um, because you know another the ref that got kind of over with the with yeah, the wrestler. Yeah, yeah, he got over as kind of a wrestler. I mean, he was. Little Nate. I mean, he had mm-hmm. the blonde hair. He came yeah. out wearing the same robe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Came out with Ric Flair. They did a nice tag match together. It was, it, it was interesting, mm-hmm. and that got that really got him over. That put him on the map, in my opinion. But Charles Robinson's awesome. He's always been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is a good. He, he he's is a good one. I love his facial expressions. Like he is one of the guys <laughs> that I like watch and go. You know what? I really want to be that. I want to. I want to have that face. I like his concerned look. Yeah, he's always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or when he's like shocked. You know, yeah. he's the... I, these two are making facial expressions at the microphone now. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're we're, we're just talking, man. Come oh, on, we're man. talking. That's how it is, you know. All right, L- let's move away a little bit from the referee stuff. Well, of course, unless you had anything else to add. No, no. I okay, think that's good. Uh, let's move on to the next thing that that you really got going on. You're you're into the. Into the yogas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the the DDP yoga here, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, DDP yeah. yoga is awesome. I mean, okay. I, I can't I can't put it over enough, <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, well, let, let's start at the beginning then. Okay. And, you know, so we can figure out how you're going to put it over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not a problem. Let's start at the beginning. Why did you decide that you wanted to uh, do DDP yoga? Well, um, I'm a diabetic. I'm type 2 diabetic. And um, I went to see my doctor uh, two months ago. And my blood sugars were out of control. They were putting me on more medications. And my doctor pretty much said, look, you've got to do something. You know, you can't... You know, I, I, I work full-time. I'm a chemical laboratory technician during the day. <laughs> I'm a full-time student. I take 14 credit hours. Whew. And uh, then I also do wrestling on the weekends. So, you know, I'm a very, 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 very busy guy. And that's the only reason why we haven't been able to interview you before and why we're doing it now, because it's spring break. Right, yeah. yeah. So, you know, Doc told me I needed to do something, and I remember uh, talking in the back with Steve DeMarco, and uh, he had mentioned that, hey, you might want to take a look at DDP's program. You know, it's something to keep in the back of your mind. So... I kind of went, all right, that's cool. I can, I, I'll look into it. And I got on the website, ddpyoga.com. I had to put that plug in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I started watching the videos, started watching these people make these tremendous transformations, you know. I mean, the, Arthur Borman, you know, you got this guy that he can hardly walk. He, that's the guy that did a little yeah, video, right? Yeah. yeah, he's the guy on the on that video. And it's just like less than a year, he goes from walking on hand crutches to running you know yeah, yeah. he loses over a hundred pounds in nine months yeah i saw the video it's it's, cr- have you seen the video no i haven't uh, you go check wow you got to check that yeah. video out oh, okay. it, it'll definitely open your eyes um i'll check it out <laughs> but uh not right now after the show yeah yeah yes. after the show yeah. <laughs> we'll post the, we'll post the video on our, our site cool. okay we can do that cool that, that's awesome i watched that and i went okay well i'm gonna give this a shot and you know once i got DDP's program, and I started really listening to some of DDP's message, which is all about living life at 90%. 90% how you react to the things that happen to you. You You have the ultimate control over how you react, how you adapt, how you breathe, and how you take action. And it's really taught me how to be more positive. I really was not the positive person before I started getting into DDP's program. Uh-huh. And I'm just, I'm amazed at the effects that this program has had on my life. I mean, I've lost 18 pounds in 30 days. I went from 243 to like 225, mm-hmm. which is 
amazing. Mm -hmm. I lost five inches total across my body Mm -hmm. just from doing yoga. I didn't touch weights. I didn't run. Nothing. I was just, yeah, I was just doing yoga. And it's just, it's amazing. I I can't wait to see what I look like at two months. If I can do it, if the fat ref (laughs) that, you know, has the belly hanging over his belt can go from that to what I am today and beyond, anybody can. I mean, if if Arthur Borman can do that, anybody can. Mm -hmm. I mean, the things that DDP has done for people... Uh, here recently, I mean, you can you can look at what he's done with Jake the Snake Roberts. Mm-hmm. Dear God, I mean, I still remember whenever Jake came down here to the VFW hall mm-hmm. and like punched the guy, took his money and left. You know, <laughs> didn't come back out for the for the show. I, I remember that, but it wasn't not it wasn't long after that that he went to stay with DDP and he's completely turned his life right, around. Yeah. I mean, he. He's not drinking, he's not drugging, he's completely sober. And not only has DDP been able to help Jake, but now he's helping Scott Hall. Mm-hmm. Scott Hall's going, what, 50 days sobriety now? Yeah, something like 50 or 60 days, something like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and if anybody needed help, it's him. He's oh. been through so many different programs, so many different periods of being sober and then not. And yeah, so far, it's been working for him, and I hope it continues to work for him. Yeah, I mean, that's the ultimate thing about DDP. He's not going to candy coat anything. He doesn't like whiners. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I really don't either. I think that's why I like the program. <laughs> <laughs> but you're either going to do it or you're not. You're not going to try anything. Right. Or you're going to make a decision and you're going to do it. Or you're not going to do it. And mm-hmm. you're going to live with your choices. And I think him working with Scott Hall is kind of teaching Scott that, hey, you got to start making yeah. better choices, right. you know. And I'm... I'm really rooting for him, you know. He's got that program going on Indiegogo where they're trying to raise money. For yeah, Scott a fundraiser Hall. for him, yeah. They're doing a fundraiser on Indiegogo. And I'm anybody who's out there listening to this, I please, on on Scott's behalf and from, from me. Or for any wrestling fan for, who's for a, fan, any wrestling a fan, fan of Scott Hall. Yeah. Any, anybody who's a fan of Scott Hall. Whatever you can do to help, man, any little bit helps. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably see if we could try to post up the link on uh, you know, I'll yeah, send can, it to you over Twitter. There we go. Yeah, we, yeah. we can get that out there. Yeah. yeah, and I'm also looking for Twitter followers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and put that shameless, you know, plug, shameless plug out there. You what, know? What's the Twitter handle? <laughs> uh, what is it? Stash it's, underscore R-O-W. Yeah, yeah that's uh, me. At stash underscore R-O-W. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of hesitant out there, man. That's, you, can't, you can't be hesitating. Well, you <laughs> know. If someone asks for your Twitter, your Twitter name, man, you got you to... Gotta, well, you yeah. know... I. This is coming from the guy that's never on Twitter. <laughs> this ain't about me. Uh, <laughs> this has been our guest. Right. I'm, I am on Twitter all the time. I just never look at what my handle is because I'm always putting everybody else's stuff out there. Yes. So <laughs> I, I, I forget today. mine. You. Yes, you did do two, two tweets today. That's a, a that's new a record mess. for you. Wow. And I'm exhausted. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> Man. That's a heavy list going over here. That's got to be 200 characters plus. I know. Oh, my, thumbs oh my so, God. My thumbs are so sore. <laughs> oh, man. Baby steps. Yeah, baby, baby steps. steps. <laughs> Get that man some baby powder. Stay. You, got, you got the yoga. Got I got the Twitter, okay? There we go. There we go. All right. Um, okay. Well, I don't have anything else planned that, that we had for uh, this interview. Uh, we're running a little long right now. Uh, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, since I'm done with any of the things that, that I had originally planned, is there anything else that you just want to tack on there at the end? Any plugs or anything that you want to throw out there before we wrap it up? Well, um, you know, please don't forget to check us out on Feed. Uh, mm-hmm. Feed.com backslash Booker T. P-H-E-E-D. Yeah, P-H-E-D dot com. And then uh, also make sure you check us out on YouTube. Uh, it's Booker T R O W his YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, we put out a new show every week. Please like and leave, leave your comments because we can't get better without y'all letting us know what you'd like to see, or you know, oh my God, why'd you put that match on, or mm-hmm. what's going on with this character, or what's going on with that character. By the way, I will say I do not approve of Abel Andrew Jackson. <laughs> 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 All right. I don't approve of Abel Andrew Jackson because I don't like guys that hit girls. And he had no right to 
put his hands on Mrs. Bates. I don't know why he's got to be like Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely needs some help. But that's that's just for me. That's my own personal opinion as the ref. Unbiased I'm, ref. Unbiased yes, ref. Yes, I yes. am unbiased. Even though even though there are people that I don't agree with. Hey, I'm just... still going to call it down the middle. <laughs> I was about to say that. Hey, you're just calling it right down the middle. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, uh, that reference was from uh, the ROW show that took place this past weekend. And we will be talking a little bit about that you know, right after the, uh, the interview's done here. It, it was a really great show. Uh, we had a, a really fun time at this show uh, this past weekend. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always like that at ROW and you know, You've been there since day one, and so have I, and it's been quite the ride. And I, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what new heights it'll reach, you know. Well, me so, too. Um, thanks so much for coming on. We're uh, definitely going to, you know, keep on cheering for you, the stash, <laughs> and keep doing our little chant. And I hope, you know, someday we'll uh, you know, get some more exciting news out of you. And, hey, maybe we'll even have you on the show again. Absolutely. <laughs> I look forward to it. Thank you so much for inviting me out. Oh, All right. You're welcome. We'll talk to you later, bro. All right, thanks. All right, guys. That was our interview with a special guest, Jason the Stash Olson. Uh, he was at this past week's ROW, so we're gonna talk a little bit about it. We were there too. Uh, you know, as we are, you know, every month. It was a uh, Great show, man. You can see us there every month and every other indie show that we go to in our in our fancy new blue Houston Wrestling Radio t-shirts. That's right. Yeah, we did get uh, some t-shirts. We already had a couple of people say, hey, those nice things look nice. Yeah. yeah. So I bet they would look nice on uh, other people. Who made those? Uh, well, Aaron made the design, oh. uh, awesome AG designs. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got them printed at a place called Eight. Ace T-shirts out here in uh, Deer Park. Okay. So yeah, uh, some good stuff, guys. So uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it'll look good on you someday. Uh, <clears throat> you know, just hint, wink, wink, hint, hint. Yes, just yes. saying. All right. Um, but getting back to, to what I was originally trying to get at yeah. was uh, ROW. It was a great show as always. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a couple of things that I just want to highlight from that. First off, there was a, a tag team match. Oh, was uh, there? Yes, and with. Uh, Kelly Kevin and uh, American Eagle taking on the Lockhearts. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good match, and uh, there was, definitely, there was some interesting, yeah, entertaining spots in that, in that match there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Anybody that uh, knows or follows ROW goes to the shows kind of would know who Kelly Kevin is. Okay, well, it's, for the people who don't know, go ahead and you can probably the, explain who. Uh, yeah, uh, this this is a guy <laughs> whose gimmick. Is that he's kind of, well, in the early days, he was just a straight up, you know, just dude dressed like a chick and he would fight in the, uh, in the women's matches and whatnot. And, uh, th- that's kind of who he is. And he, he still has the same gimmick, except now instead of trying to fool his, fool us that, you know, he's not a chick, like, it's just, hey, I'm a guy, but I, you know, dress like a girl. So he's, he's a bit of a, you know, he's got some of that stuff going on. <laughs> and uh, he was teaming up with the American Eagle, who's a, uh, of course, masked luchador <laughs> with... Uh, Is he considered luchador? Uh, probably, I don't know. Uh, he's got mm-hmm. the stars and stripes on his uh, tights there, and as yeah. well as uh, on his mask, so... I wouldn't think luchador. I would just you wouldn't think, think I would just think masked wrestler. He's a masked wrestler? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he's a masked wrestler um, with uh, <laughs> this great gimmick, and he's, he's, just, he's just really... Really entertaining, and those two together—that was that was really great. Uh, that that was just awesome. Then, course, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure some of those jokes were uh, family friendly, but uh, oh yeah, yeah. there was definitely some <laughs> non PG stuff going on there oh, with with that match. Uh, but it was some good stuff. And they're taking on the Lockhearts, a new, relative newcomers to ROW, uh, and they're you know they put on a pretty decent match right there. Um, I can't wait to actually see <laughs> when it comes online. Uh, see, see what all they caught there, especially with, um, uh, dare I say, the, uh, the kissing spots. No. Oh, well, yes. Well, I think so. That was kind of in the middle of the ring there. Yeah. Yeah. There was, uh, we'll just leave it at that and yeah. we'll let you watch the show later. If that doesn't get you intrigued, I don't yes, know what will. Yes. <laughs> uh, now that's, that's not the only thing that, that I wanted to hit on. There, there was something else that happened towards the end of the show. Oh, after yes. the main event yeah. and after everything. This was, 
quite uh, surprising, I yeah. would say. We had Booker come, come out mm-hmm. with Charmel, and they said that they had a very, very special uh, announcement. And uh, whenever that type of stuff happens, it's like, oh, oh. We need to pay attention. Yeah. And then they called out our guest from last week, Kid Ransom. Friend of the show. Friend of the show, Kid Ransom. We were like, okay, well, what's going on? And then Book turned the microphone over to Ransom and said, have at it, kid. And basically he uh, busted out a wedding ring, went to ringside and proposed to his uh, girlfriend. Yeah. So, and, and she said yes. <laughs> And this was not a storyline. This was like real. This is actually happened. You, know? <laughs> you sound surprised. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes something a- real happened in wrestling show. <laughs> yes. Well, you have to, you know, do that from time to time, you know, because <laughs> there has been weddings and wrestling and whatnot. And those kind of story angles, uh, story angles, storylines. Oh, <laughs> it's getting uh, late. Yeah, it's getting late. <laughs> anyway, so yes, he proposed. She said yes. A big, big congratulations goes out to the happy couple there. Uh, thanks. Congrats, guys. Yeah, congrats, yeah. guys. Uh, thanks for allowing us to be in on that moment. I know mm-hmm. that's a very, you know, special moment in a person's life. So that's really cool. Can't wait to, you know, see what else happens with this. And, you know, hopefully we'll have Kid on again someday soon. Yeah. There you go. So that was some awesome stuff, man. Awesome. Uh, you never know what you're going to see when you come out to an RO, ROW show. It's always a good time, man. Let's, uh, let's kind of get to our real plugs here, kind of wrap up the show. Uh, we have NWA Houston, March 15th. That is this Friday. It's going to be at 730-21902 Northwest Freeway in Cyprus. Uh, after that, the, the following week, uh, XWA, uh, you know, it's their second show. It's gonna be Sunday, March the 24th, and, uh, Robbie A is scheduled to be there. And, uh, we did get on their Facebook page, they, uh, announced who he's gonna be wrestling. Uh, he's gonna be wrestling David Starr. Um, he is the, uh, the champ for war, which is like their parent company, um, their parent promotion. And apparently Robbie E is going to be having a title shot at that title. <laughs> so that should that? be interesting. <laughs> How about that? Uh, so come check that out. 6 p.m. at the Midwest Customs Automotive Center. Ooh, that's a mouthful. That is on 2701 Strawberry Road, Pasadena, Texas. So come on out to that. Uh, the next show after that one uh, that we got on here is the uh, Texas All-Star Wrestling, the Umble Rumble. That's going to be on March the 30th at Coach's Sports Bar at 7 p.m. A little update here on Ring of Honor coming to San Antonio. Tickets did officially already go on sale, and we did get our tickets. Uh, so hurrah for that. Uh, I think tickets, you know, still available. So if you guys want to, you know, check it out, go out to the show, go to San Antonio and then check out Ring of Honor, which, hey, they hardly ever come to this side of the country. That's a really, really big deal, a really special thing. Mm. Uh, go online and, you know, buy some tickets. Go. (laughs) (laughs) Ta-da. What he said. Yes, what I said. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, we still, uh, are continuing our nice little friendship with Wizards Podcast. Shining uh, Wizards. D- well, yeah, well, Shining Wizards. That's yes. what it's called. That's the official title. <laughs> okay, let me dispel any confusion here. <laughs> Their website is www.shiningwizards.com. Their Twitter handle is at Wizards Podcast. <laughs> that's uh, sort where of the confusion's coming in. I didn't say I was correcting you. I was just saying Shiny Wizards. Oh, this guy. So check them out. They always have great uh, uh, interviews on. I believe tonight that they're interviewing Raven. Jeez. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you'll see. Two weeks ago, Jay Lethal. Last week, RVD. This week, Raven. Come on, guys. Say something for us, man. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. man. Jeez. Big show offs. Yeah. Uh, these guys but yeah check them out they're great guys um we also had a, another podcast wrestling chronicle uh they started up here recently and you know 
Yeah, you know, it's a good dude. I've been listening to a little bit of his stuff, and uh, yeah, he's got some good points, some good things that he's talking about. Uh, Nar World Order, they are going to be having a show um, upcoming here soon. I believe it is March the 23rd. Check out their Facebook page. Facebook, uh, well, I don't think they have that fancy thing that we have yet, where it's just a Facebook slash Nar World Order. If that's not on there, just go and do a little search for Nar World Order, and they're the ones who do our music. And, hey, we did that little fancy change up there this last week where we you know did a bigger portion a bigger sample of their song and we put mm-hmm. everybody in there that's been doing our bumper things for us and you know you're listening to Houston Press Radio so that's really awesome and uh, we'll try to uh, incorporate a little bit more of those as we get more interviews in there and uh, you know another big thanks to Narworld Order guys yep. yeah uh, anything else am I forgetting anyone uh, hope not I hope not Mm. If I if I did forget you, I'm sorry. It's just late. It's been a long show. Um, <laughs> we had a lot. To, we had a lot to talk about this week. Yeah, we did have a lot to talk about, and it I wasn't mean, all. And surprisingly, it wasn't all WWE. Well, yeah, it's true. I mean, when it comes down to it, TNA is having just four pay per views a year. So when the pay per view does happen, it's kind of a big deal, and. Uh, it's WrestleMania season, so that's kind of a big deal for WWE. So, uh, yeah, of course we had a lot to talk about. If, if you made it this far, thank you for listening, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for, you know, supporting us and, uh, you know, listening to our show and giving us your feedback and whatnot. Uh, we'll come at you again next week with another edition here at Houston Wrestling Radio. Adios, my friends. Y'all keep it classy. <laughs> <laughs>